Hello, my old school soul food family. Chef Jeffy back with another video. All right, y'all, as promised, the month of July is all about canning. Every week, I'm going to be doing a canning video. And today, I'm starting with the, one of the top ones. My top three items that my family, friends, co-workers absolutely love is chow chow. Chow chow is probably number three after my peach jelly. No, my, uh, my, my number one is always my... Uh, blackberry a berry jelly or grape jelly then it's the peach and plum jelly and then it's this right here see this old school chow chow see that everybody always wondering what is chow chow what is this chow chow this is chow chow now a lot of people i'm telling you they ain't gonna want to deal with what i deal with like i told y'all i absolutely love canning of course, today is not Saturday. Today is mid of the week because I'm going to have Dylan here helping me can. I mean, can. Help me uh, uh, record this. But I absolutely love on Saturdays get in my kitchen, turn the TV on in the background, maybe a little music, and just can to I can't can anymore. I might have 36 cans of stuff. I might start out with jelly and get into chow chow and get into peaches or whatever. And I just love it. It's just a, to me, it's just a relaxing thing to do. Some people are not into it, but today I'm gonna show y'all how I can chow chow. Now, chow chow is a southern staple. A lot of people I couldn't believe they know what chow chow is. Uh, that people ask me, what is chow chow? I mention it a lot of times. I use it sometimes in my videos. And they uh they uh be saying, um, hold on just a second, y'all. All right, I'm back, y'all. They be saying, what is a uh, chow chow? I say chow chow is, uh, I try to explain it, and then I have to, you know, pretty much show them <laughs> what it is. But you can do anything you want. I'm going to show you what I'm using today. I'm going to use uh, cabbage. I got some uh, Anaheim peppers. You can use banana peppers. Sometimes use banana peppers. I'm going to use Anaheim peppers. I got regular onion. You can use, I'm using yellow sweet onion. You can use red onion you want to. I'm going to shred it carrot. I'm going to put a few jalapenos in there. I couldn't find green tomatoes. I found the next best thing. Tomatillos, which is so, they have that like sourness type taste. It's going to work so much good, just like green tomato in this uh, chow chow. So I got some tomatillos. I got all four colors of the bell pepper, red, green, yellow, and orange. Uh, and I got some uh these little sweet peppers. And the thing about my chow chow, I slice it in different shapes. This I'll probably chop up. These I'll uh, do big rough chops. The onions I'll probably chop up. These I'll slice in rings. The jalapenos I'll slice in rings. These I'll slice in rings. The cabbage I'll shred up. So I like to do different types of shapes and sizes. So uh, as you can see in here, when you're eating it, you have a different eating experience from it. Plus, we're going to do a brine of uh, apple cider vinegar, regular vinegar, a little celery seeds, and brown sugar. And then I'm going to use uh, salt as a brine. But I'll show you in the process. First thing I need to do, this is the hardest part, is chop all this stuff up. Get it all chopped up in different shapes and sizes I want it. And I need to put some, you can use cannon salt. I use kosher salt. I don't buy cannon salt anymore because kosher salt and cannon salt is the same thing. I need to put let it sit on the vegetables for an hour. Minimum hour. Sometimes I go three or four, but today I'm going to do an hour, and it just excretes a lot of the water out of it. I don't know why. Don't ask me why. That's what my mama did. You don't question your mama what she's doing stuff. Uh, like, mama, why are you doing all this extra work? But she done it, so I'm going to put the salt on there, and I rinse the salt off. Then I'm going to make a brine on the side with the brown sugar, apple cider vinegar, and the white vinegar. Pour it on top. We're going to boil it for about an hour because I want it completely, completely tender. I don't want no crunch to it, but I don't want it mush either. I don't want to, I don't like a chow chow that's mushy and all chopped up very fine because I like to distinguish what I'm eating. When I lay the chow chow on there, I like it to lay on top of my black eyed peas or my cream peas or my crowler peas or my cabbage or my pinto beans. I like to lay up on top of there and I can distinguish. I don't like to mix it in with it. I just don't like the eating experience like that. So anyway, y'all, I will be right back here. I'm going to get all this stuff chopped up. It's going to take me about, probably about 10, 15, 20 minutes to get it all chopped up, and then I'll be right back, and we'll start the first process. Old school chow chow. Just getting started. We'll be right back. 
All right, y'all, we are back here. All right, y'all, it, it took me about 15 minutes. I got all this chopped up. I got my lettuce here, lettuce. I got my cabbage, I shredded. See that? It's the main uh, member of the show right here. I want this to be dominant. Now, some people like the tomatoes to be dominant. Some people like the peppers to be dominant. But I want my cabbage to be the main dominant. As you can see in my, oh yeah, I'm in your way. You see in the here in my other chow chow. See how the cabbage is the dominant figure in the uh, in the chow chow. That's what I like it to be. Okay, carrots. Of course, I don't like the shredded carrots. I always buy them already shredded. The white onions I chopped up. The bell peppers I julienne. Y'all, like I say, I like a contrast of textures. Some chopped, some sliced, some julienne. It just makes the eating experience and it looks nice in the jar. So I julienne the red, green, yellow, and orange bell peppers. I sliced the jalapenos. I sliced the sweet peppers, the yellow, orange, and red sweet peppers. I sliced those. I quartered the tomatoes. I quartered them. I want a little quarter. See that? I took them and quartered those. And these are the Anaheim peppers. And I kind of sliced these. I cut them in half and sliced them. So I all got all contrast of colors. You got different colors, pretty colors, but they got a different shapes and sizes. That's what I like about it. I didn't just chop everything up. I want the difficult. It's the contrast. It just looks so much better after you cook it. You'll see. So what I'm gonna do, y'all? I'm gonna take a big bowl. I ain't gonna do this on camera. Take a big bowl. I'm gonna mix all this stuff together. I need to get it all mixed up together in a big bowl, then I'm going to put in my pots over here, and I'm going to come back and show y'all the next step. But the main thing is get it all mixed evenly as can. So I got a big bowl for this, so, and I'm going to get all this mixed together, and then after get it all mixed together, I'm going to put it in the pot, and I'm going to show you the next step. I love and can. This is so exciting, y'all. So this is going to be a Friday. Uh, y'all probably on there wondering, what is the Friday TGI fish segment of the week? For the next four weeks, there ain't going to be no TGI fish segment of the week. It's going to be all about canning because I was trying to figure out what day can I input a canning video. And Friday, I'm telling you, I had to take the Friday. I didn't want to take the cake away. I didn't want to take the Sunday afternoon away. So it's going to be about Friday since they, a lot of people don't watch the Friday Fish of the Week anyway. So I'm going to input canning in there for the pretty much the rest of the summer. Probably about till the end of August and then we'll come back with the fish video. So anyway, y'all, we will be right back. All right, y'all, we are back. Look at this pretty here. Ain't that nice? Yeah, that's the hard part, y'all. Hard part is over with. Chopping and getting this up, but the chopping part, I love it. it I'm telling you, it's just it's so soothing to me as I'm chopping vegetables and just 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 relaxing and it's y'all just don't know the excitement of canning. I watched my mama do it for many years. I thought that was the coolest thing, and I had to get in there and learn it. A lot of young people don't want. I had to learn how she doing this chow chow, how she doing her jelly. How she doing the jam, how she uh, canning the green beans and the, the new potatoes all together in the can. Yeah, she had, we, uh, we wanted green beans and potatoes, they was already in the can. I mean, in the jar, when I mean canning. And we just put take it out, put it in the pot. We got green beans and potatoes, any kind of vegetable, peas, beans, everything. And I think it's amazing. The, the canning saves you so much money. You can give them these gifts. Nothing like a personal thing of canning and giving them this gift. When people come over my house, I'm telling you, they've never been here and they see my camera, like, oh my God, you can? Even young people. And they say, sir, can we just have some jelly? Yeah, take your jelly. Here, take your couple of jars. I, and, and jelly, y'all see my canning room now. You think it's full? Uh-uh. Wait till the end of summer. I'm going to have maybe 250, 300 jars of different things. And I'll give it half of it away. I usually give more than that, three quarters of it away. By the, about this time next year, it'll be pretty much gone. So, yeah, I love it, love it, love it. So, the next four, five weeks are going to be by candy. So, now, back to what I was doing. Okay, y'all. I got this mixed together. One thing I didn't tell y'all, when you mix it together, put your celery salt already in there, too. When you mix it together, sprinkle your celery Salt. I'm saying celery seeds, not salt. Celery seeds, y'all. I'm sorry. Seeds. It's in the description of the recipe, so don't worry. Okay, now, all I'm going to do now, I want to put salt on this. My mama used to do this. You can use uh, you can use uh, canning salt, but kosher salt is the same thing. And what I do, I'm going to mix it together like this. 
and this gonna make some of the liquid I don't know why y'all don't ask me why she did but it does make the liquid kind of come out of it and don't worry we're gonna rinse this salt off before we add the brine and when I come back in a second we're gonna uh but make sure you use a cannon salt or a kosher salt y'all for this put that on there you're gonna let it sit for about an hour she used to let it sometimes sit all day because she was busy doing other things. Probably wringing a chicken's neck as we, uh, she used to kill chickens too. And that was an all day project too, killing 25, 30 chickens, wringing their neck and, uh, you know, dipping them in the hot water and plucking them and all that. That was an all day thing too. So that's another story for another video. So anyway, y'all, we're going to let this sit for about an hour. I'm going to let it sit on top of the stove. I ain't going to turn the stove on. We're going to come back. We're going to rinse this off. And then we're going to, matter of fact, when I come back, I'm going to make the brine that's going to go on top of this. Very simple brine, y'all. It's brown sugar, red wine, red, red wine vinegar, red wine vinegar. Ah, apple cider vinegar and white vinegar. And that's what's going to pour on top of this. That's what's going to cook this. And that's what's going to go inside the jar. That little liquid right there inside the jar. See that liquid? That's all it is. Brown sugar, apple cider vinegar, and white vinegar. So anyway, y'all, we'll be right back. All right, y'all, we are back. All right, y'all, one step I didn't tell y'all. When I'm canning, y'all, I'm just in my zone, and I'm just working, and just like I'm not even videotaping. Look, when you put the cabbage in the salt in the cabbage, make sure you fill it up with water. If you want to use warm water, it's absolutely fine. It's not going to hurt it. And you're going to let it set for one hour like this. Like I say, sometimes my mom would let it set two or three hours. Add water to that. Add water to your, fill it up with water all the way till it stops, till it uh, covers the cabbage. And uh, yeah, let it sit. I forgot to tell y'all to add water to this. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm having a, like I say, brain cramp here. So yeah, I need to make sure y'all know that. It, it's in the directions of the video of the, uh, the it's the recipe is in the directions. The recipe is in the description of the video. Let me slow down here. I'm telling y'all, I'm excited by canning here. So again, make sure you fill it up with water. If you add the salt to this, put it, fill it up with water and let it sit. And later we're just gonna drain the water off of it and rinse it. And then we're going to add this here, what I'm about to make here. All this is is a brine, y'all. And I'm going to add this. It's brown sugar. White sugar. I didn't tell you about the white sugar. White sugar and uh, apple cider vinegar. It's three to one, y'all. So I'm going to do three parts white vinegar. One part. Uh, one part apple cider. I'm just eyeing this, but yeah, it, it, it's, it's got it's three cups to one cup if you play it along at home. It's three cups of white vinegar. That's more. I'm gonna have a little extra. Oh, let me get here. I ain't showing y'all what I'm doing. Here we go. Three cups white vinegar. One cup of red wine vinegar. Sugar uh, is uh. Sugar is three to one, two to one. Two parts white sugar. Let me turn this on. One part brown sugar. The brown sugar in there. And all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring this up to a boil, y'all, just to dissolve the sugar. And this gonna be the the uh, the liquid that goes over the cabbage after you. This is what the cabbage is gonna boil in. After you drain this off, this is what's going to go on top of the cabbage and let it cook for an hour in this. And this is what's going to give it the... The one thing about chow chow, it's got a little spiciness from the jalapeno, the sweetness from the sugar, and a little tartness from the vinegar. All the flavors just work so well together, y'all. It's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. I like the taste mine, too, y'all. I say, this guy's crazy tasting... Mm, mm, mm. Ah, ah. A little sweetness, a little tartness, like what you want in your chow chow, y'all. So anyway, y'all, I hope I didn't confuse y'all, because I'm not, 
uh, being organized as I am with this video. Again, let me re reiterate, make sure back here, you got your cabbage, it's soaking in the salty water. Now for one hour, at least one hour. You wanna do two or three, four hours, it's not gonna hurt it. After that, we're gonna come back, we're gonna drain that off. But while that's, but while that's soaking, you make your little brine. I call this a brine or whatever the solution is called in another pot. Or we're gonna pour this on top of the other cabbage. When you drain it, that's what's gonna cook in it. And that's gonna be the liquid inside the jar. That's why you see how brown this is. That's the uh, brown sugar and the vinegar and white sugar. So anyway, y'all, I ain't tell y'all white sugar in the beginning. But like I said, I can five, six, seven different items, y'all. And they all run together sometimes. So anyway, y'all, we'll be back when it's time to drain this cabbage. And we'll get this thing finished. We'll be right back. All right, y'all, we are back. I almost knocked the camera over here, y'all. Um, y'all probably said, what is he doing with that boiling water? I'm going to tell you what I'm doing with this boiling water. Every time I can, y'all, I sanitize my jars. Before I put anything in it, I'm going to throw the lids in here. And these, I always use the jars that I had recycled to come back. I tell you about people. You give them stuff, and I tell them, y'all bring the jars back, or send me the jars, and I'll pick them up later. So my brother, my mom, my auntie, people like that, even some of my friends, they'll save the jars, and they'll keep them. I went to my brother's house, what, a couple of months ago, had about 10 jars over there. My mom was telling me, baby, you got that jars, the jars over there in the thing. Cause I'm always taking uh, jelly and cow chow and all that over to this house. And my mom makes sure they keep the jars for me. Cause she know how valuable the jars are left. So what I do, I throw the lids in here first. I get them all in here. One second, y'all moving around. And I do this with the new jars too. Not only the, uh, not only the used ones, I do it with the new ones also. So I'm gonna get all the lids in here, get them sanitized. Really, that's very, this is very important, y'all, when you're canning. Hold on, y'all, I'm walking around here doing it. To have all your stuff sanitized, because you definitely don't want to get nobody sick. And thank God I've never gotten anybody sick. I feel nobody my canning, because I'm very careful with that. My mom was careful too when she did her canning, because like I say, there's no preservatives in this stuff, so you doing it the old way like they did it back in the day. But what I do, I let these boil maybe 15, 20 minutes, and then I'll come back. I'll take this out of here, and I got a big uh, called a hotel pan, like using the restaurant industry, and I just throw them in the hotel pan. And then later, I'll show you when I come back. I'm gonna put my jaws in there next. So anyway, y'all, we'll be right back. All right, y'all, we back. Now, all I'm gonna do, y'all, now is just put these here jaws in there. Like I said, 10, 15 minutes. I'll throw these in there, let them sanitize there. It's gonna take me a few minutes. So this is what I do while I'm waiting on my, waiting on my, uh, my cabbage to sit for the hour. I just do that. Like I say, y'all, I just love doing this. You have a little music in the background and you, you know, doing your little canning thing. This ain't for everybody because it, it takes a lot of patience and just, and solace. Like I say, this is my solace for me. This is how I relax. Some people do other things to relax, but you get me in my canning room, y'all. Canning uh, day. And I love doing what I'm doing. So, anyway, y'all, I'll be right back once I get all these, uh, these jars sanitized up and it'll be time to get the cabbage going because it'll be a little bit over an hour then and uh only thing too before i step off these little things gotta make sure you ain't got two on one that happens a lot for me i get the cylinder jar like oh my god i'm missing one <laughs> but uh i have to count them and make sure they all match up because sometimes you'll get you'll get them where they stick like this together see that and then you got two on one, so you gotta make sure you don't have that. So anyway, y'all, I'll be right back. All right, y'all, we back here. Okay, y'all. I let this actually sit for two hours. 
right here in the brine. And what I'm gonna do next, like I told y'all, I'm gonna drain this off of here. Drain this off of here. And you really don't have to rinse it off because what little salt that's on it, y'all, is it's gonna be beneficial. It's gonna be beneficial for when you're cooking. So it's not really gonna hurt it. You're gonna drain that off. Wait one second, y'all. Put it back in here. Do the other one here. Put it all that off. And I put in recipe, rinse it off, but it's not really necessary, y'all. Okay, I got one more here. Make sure you get your good colander, y'all, so it can drain really easy. I know some of the celery seeds is going to drain off, but it's not a big deal. You got plenty of celery seeds still in there. Get all that on there. You don't see all them pretty colors there. Okay, now, what I'm going to do now, remember that brine that I made? Oh, the, I'm going to pour that right on the top. Pour the other one right up in here. And with this, y'all, you can always add a little water to this because the, uh, to make it fill up. Because it's very potent, that uh, sugar and the vinegar. So if you want to add a little bit just to cover it. And remember also, as this cooking, y'all, this cabbage has a lot of liquid in it. And this simmer, this stuff going to cook down a lot. So you don't want to add too much more. Just enough to kind of like semi cover it. And then as it's cooking, of course, you know it's going to cook down a lot more. So I added a cup of water to each of that. So it's not going to hurt the, the consistency of it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it on the, on the stove and let it simmer for an hour. Or at least until it's really, really. I'll show y'all over here what I'm going to do. I'm going to just put this over here on the stove, y'all. And we're going to let this cook. I'm going to cover it up. We're going to let this cook for about, it's going to take an hour. Sometimes a little longer, because like I said, I want mine completely soft. I don't want my chow chow crunchy. I want it completely soft. And you can see how the, how the liquid, just covering it up and bleeding. As this cook down, you'll have a lot of liquid in there, because you know, like you say, like I say, uh, cabbage has a lot of liquid. So anyway, y'all, we'll be back. Probably come back through halfway through the process and show you how it's doing. So we'll be right back. All right, y'all, we back here. Now, look, y'all, I've combined these into one pot. You know, as cabbage cooked down, it's going to shrink. And then all the liquid, I have just enough liquid in there. So what I'm going to do now, y'all, you could put it in the jars because this stuff is ready to go. It's cooked about, I let it cook about an hour and a half because you need a little bit more. Most times it's cooked an hour, but y'all look how pretty colors that is. Got the cabbage in there, the jalapenos, the bell peppers, all in there. And like I said, to make sure the cabbage is a dominant thing. That's why I like, you got even tomatillos in there. So I'm telling you, I like to let mine, I'll tell y'all at the end of the video, let it set up one month. Before I even open the jar, I just like it to just set in there one month in the on in the room. Before I, I mean, you can eat it the next day if you want to, but it just does so much if you patient and let it sit up for a month. So now what we're gonna do, y'all? I'm gonna move this pot over to my counter here, and we're gonna put it in our jar. I'm gonna show you a few of them how I'm gonna do them. So this is the process. It's kind of hot here. What I do, you have your little, little gadget guy here. And what I do is just take them. I take my spat and my tongs here. Get all the way up to the top. Go to the next one. Put it in there just like this. Yeah. 
later on, after you get all of them in there, we're going to come back and we're going to fill them up with the juice. The first thing I need to do is need to get them all filled up with the rest of veggies here. We got the big jar over here too. So big jar here. Like I say, y'all, this is just therapy for me. You should do this on Saturday morning, get up, and I just can all day Saturdays. That's what my mom used to do. It was just all day canning. She canned everything. We go, we didn't go to the store. Only went to the store for flour and sugar. Other than that, we didn't go to the store for no vegetables, no meat, no jelly, no nothing. No eggs, no milk. We had it all in the back door. All out there in the field. We had milk cows, chicken eggs. We had so many eggs, we just giving them away. You know chicken lay one egg a day. If you got 30, 40 chickens, that's a lot of eggs in a day. So, so anyway, y'all, I'm going to step off, get all this filled up, and I'm going to come back. I'm going to show you how I put the juice in there. Be right back. All right, y'all, we back? All right, y'all, now, all I'm going to do, y'all, I'm going to fill it up with the remaining juice. That's all I do, just like this. Put the juice in there. Little by little. The best part of the chow chow, y'all, this juice here. love the juice of this stuff. I just take the juice and pour on my mustard greens or collard greens. I eat this stuff on spaghetti, eat it on lasagna. I tell you, I've tried it on everything, y'all. Okay. okay. And while you're doing this, you want to make sure you don't want to touch the rim. You remember you got these already sanitized so that's gonna have a lot of extra juice in that one that's amazing that's gonna be for me okay all right y'all now i'm gonna show you now what i'm gonna do next here Get this out the way what i like to do make too much of a mess Get this over here like this what i'm gonna do next I got my water heating up, because you know I got to put in the water for 15 more minutes. Now, I have to say this disclaimer every time I do canning. Go and look, because everybody's different in the altitude. What I do here in Texas is different than what you do in Colorado, Oklahoma, Mississippi, according to your altitude. How long you put something in the water for it to be safe. I do 15 to 20 minutes. Some people say do an hour. Some people say do 30 minutes. I do 15 to 20 minutes in the water bath to seal this thing up. Like I say, there has a, they have a symmetric on there. Just search uh, canning temperature, canning boiling procedure in your area, and it'll tell you. But well, hold on, y'all. Let me get some top here. What I do now, I'll take the lids here. Place the lids on there. I like to put my little lids on here first. Remember, all these are nice and sanitized. I just don't want no, don't want no air in there. Two more. What's this one? Okay. All right. Now, I'm gonna lay the lids on here, y'all. We're gonna seal them up just like this, y'all. Make sure. Oh, 
sure they really on there right. And I don't, I, I haven't put them on here tight yet. I'm just getting them on there, make sure they're even. And then, cause I have to pick them up and really get them tight and they hot. So I'm gonna do it with a towel here in just a second. And I'm telling you, my mom, we didn't always have these fancy lids, but she used to can everything. And she'd take leftover mayonnaise jars and jelly jars, and she'd use them for what she'd do instead of the this here little thing. She would put wax paper and put it like that, and it worked too. Yeah, my mom was very, imp she could improvise. You know, growing up, you didn't have the, you know, the luxuries and stuff that we do right now. And she would take, and she used what she had, and it would work. I'm still here to tell about it, so I guess it wasn't nothing bad. Okay. All right, y'all. I know this is therapy for me, y'all. I'm telling you, you look at my canning room, and you haven't seen nothing. Wait, I'm gonna do a canning video every week for the next two months. My can room gonna be full of stuff. Okay, now, I got them all on there like that. What I'm gonna do, I'll pick them up and make them as tight as I can, y'all. Just like this. And y'all know, if you watched me can before, you get that pop later on after I put it in the water. Sometimes they're already popped now. I call that the seal of approval when you hear that ping. And sometimes I hear it in the middle of the night. Sometimes it takes longer than others. Sometimes it'll pop right after you take them out of the water. But when you hear that ping, that means you did a good job. That means they're sealed. Okay, now what I'm gonna do now, y'all, I got some water heating up. I'm gonna move it to the front here. All I do, y'all, I'm gonna take them here and I'm gonna set them in this hot water 15 minutes. Now, like I say, in your area, there's a rule in your area how long to do that. But you gotta be, this is very important you do it the right time, right temperature. If you don't, you're gonna get somebody sick. And like I can say, people, if you're not comfortable with canning, and you just can't just get in here and just, oh, I'm gonna can it, put it in a jar, and da da da. No, there's a science to this, and there's a liability to this. So you will get somebody sick, you're serving something that's not uh, healthy, and get somebody seriously sick. So I'm gonna do this 15, 20 minutes, and take them out, put them on the counter here, and like I said, I like to let it set 30 days before I even open them, eat them. You can do them the next couple of days, but just, with chow chow, it's just something about them when they sit a month and then you open them up. It's absolutely amazing. So anyway, y'all, we'll be back in about, about, probably about 30, 40 minutes. When they all done, I'll show you the finished product. We'll be right back. All right, y'all, we back. Okay, y'all, I'm going to take the last two out here. Sit over here on my counter and we're going to move over here and I'm going to show y'all what I got. All right, Get this here, and what I like to do, take it out of there, and I wipe, dry it off really, really good. We're about to close this video out right here, y'all, because there ain't no eating. I ain't gonna taste it because y'all already know I'm not gonna taste it because it's not ready to be eaten. So that's pretty much it, y'all. Y'all see that? So let me get my one I made, matter of fact, about six months ago. Hold on. Show you how the consistency is. This is the one I made six months ago. See how consistent it is? That's very, like I say, you go buy the recipe, you're gonna get a dozen jars out of it. I got 12 here, and the recipe, you're gonna get about 12 jars out of it. And this actually ain't gonna last me maybe two months. Once my brother and my cousin and my relatives find out about this, it's gone. I usually keep maybe two for myself, and I'll give the rest away, and I'll make more probably around August or first of September. But I'm gonna start, I'm gonna be doing jelly, grape jelly, blackberry jelly. Peach is gonna be the end of July. My peaches is coming in. I get my peaches specially ordered from Georgia. 
They come fresh on the truck. I go pick them up, matter of fact, at Katie Mills Mall. I pre-ordered them three months ago when the peaches came in season. So I get them right off the truck. So y'all saw me last year how I did that. I'm going to make peach jelly, peach preserves, peach, I think peach jam. And I'm going to do the green beans and potatoes. I'm going to the farmer market in Hempstead next couple of weeks because it's peak season for vegetables. And I'm going to pick, I'm going to can some vegetables and uh, potatoes and uh Maybe some corn relish. I might do that too this year. But every Friday is going to be a, a, a canning recipe. And this one, the most difficult one for because it's a lot of topping. You see involved in it? You see all that topping I did? That, that's a lot. But the other one's not as difficult as this one. It's chow chow. Because this has like 12 components to it. The other ones don't. So anyway, y'all, let me close this video out. If you like this video, please share, please comment, please subscribe, please follow my other social media account, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch TV, Pinterest, and OldSchoolSoulFood.com. Remember the hashtag 2022, helping others with a purpose, Old School Soul Food. Until next time, have a blessed Old School Soul Food day, and I will see y'all in the next video. Love y'all. Bye.